A viewer recently asked how they could visualize an index on screen. And another viewer hinted that you could use repeat zones. But how exactly? Well, let me show you. So let's get set up for geometry nodes. We'll click the tab up top, click plus new, press A and scale these apart quite a bit. First thing I want to do is delete the geometry, uh, but only the faces. And that will let us see the wireframe a little bit easier. So really quickly, we can see text in the form of geometry using the string to curves node. And if we add a join geometry and bring this over and give it some text, there is our text. And let's fill this curve. This string input here, this blue dot is for text. So we need to be able to make the text that we're inputting variable, but you'll also notice it's a circle, which means it's a single input. Unlike the field, which is a diamond value, where this represents multiple values being input or output. But as was suggested, we can overcome that with a repeat zone. Now the repeat zone is like in programming, like a for loop where you repeat a set of steps a certain number of times. In Blender's terms, one repeat of the loop is called a step and how many times those steps are repeated is called the iterations. So if we want to display text at every point of this geometry, text being the number, we need to specify how many iterations that would be. And we can get that value from the domain size node. If we hook this up to the geometry input, this point count will give us exactly how many points are up here that we see in the spreadsheet. So we can use that as our iterations. Now within this repeat zone, we'll want this geometry to ultimately go to the group output. And I'm going to alt drag this up here because I know I'm going to want to join some geometry together. So within this repeat zone, if we create this text, and join that geometry together. Let's bring back the original geometry as well. In every step, we'll be able to see this text at each position. But what is the position? Well, we know we're going to set the position of this instance to something, but what is that something? Well, how do we get the position of one of these vertices? We can do that with a sample index node, where if we take this geometry and we specify that we want a vector and bring in a position input, now the output of this setup will give us the position of the element at index zero. In this case, it would be X, Y, Z being one, one, one. So if we specify that position and make sure we take this geometry output here, and that has to come into the repeat zone as well. So you can see it's there. This is position zero. This is X one, Y one, Z one, but let's use the offset instead. So it doesn't squash the text together. Sweet. So that's only one index though. So now what we need to do is we need to specify the start. Yeah, right here are your initial values coming into the repeat zone. So the values come in, they come out here into the repeat zone, flow through the repeat zone, are plugged in here. And then when it loops back through, the loop is like this. So the initial values are here. It's a one time setup. Within the zone itself, they can be read or they can be updated uh, to be used in the next step. So to start, I want to say Let's start at index zero and this integer will be used throughout the step and we'll increment it before we end our step. But I want to rename that first by clicking the repeat node zone or the repeat zone node. Click node here and let's just name it I, which is kind of a conventional for loop counter in programming. So now we have I starting at zero is used in the repeat zone. Let's make sure before we forget to increment that by one for every step. So now instead of using this fixed index zero, if we take I and plug that in, you can see that we see text at every point in the geometry. Now the last thing to do is we need to make sure this is displaying the right value instead of the word text. So we can delete text. But if we try to take this I value and plug it into the string input, Blender complains, they're a mismatched data type, these inputs and outputs are incompatible. So we can undo that and bring in a value to string node and pull that into the value input. And now whatever value it is, 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, will just be converted into a string. So string out to string in, that'll give us our numbers as we expected. And you can, if you want, you can uh, rotate the instance, rotate instances to give this a 90 on the X, however you want to see these numbers for visualization purposes. All right, so that's how you can visualize the index number for each element in your geometry. If you want to set this up so that it's a node group that can be reused simply later on, let's select all of these 
Hold on, I see an issue here. We start off with eight vertices, but now we have 16, so we're doubling up the geometry. All right, looks like it's these connections here. We'll just dissolve these and dissolve that with control X. The reason was the original geometry was being joined with the output of this repeat zone, but the repeat zone has the original geometry in addition to the extra text geometry as well. So it doubled up the vertices of the original mesh. All right, problem solved. We can now take this area, control G, and that moves us into this node group. You can see the path, cube, geometry nodes, geometry nodes, node group. So if we press tab to back out, now all of that logic is bundled up into this custom nose group, which we can call visualize indices. All right, give that a fake user. And to show how reusable it is, we can add a, a grid, add a geometry node setup for it, and we can call that node group up with shift A, visualize indices, and whoa, that text is really big. So if you're serious about holding on to this setup for debugging, visualizing later, you might want to make a, uh, a group input here for the size of the text. But there is the order of vertices in this geometry. So super cool to visualize this. Let us know how you plan to use this in the future. If you found this helpful, give the video a like and subscribe. We'd love to have you as a part of the community. Take care.